Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, whose only Son came to preach peace to the nations, hear us, we beseech you, and comfort us with your steady hand as we come before you this morning in the wake of unspeakable violence again. In a world that seems hopeless, help us to remember that our hope rests always in you and in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 <sighs> Before we get going on today's reading, we will pick up on chapter 9. I'm just wondering, is there anything left over from last week that anyone wants to pick up again? And if not, that's absolutely fine. It just makes me, you know, feel like these prosperity gospel people may have it right after all. Why? It will, say more about that. Uh, you know, all of Job's comforters and Job himself seem to feel the purpose of God is to give them stuff <coughs> if they are, you know, if they're doing, making the right sacrifices. But does that mean they're right? Uh, <laughs> God doesn't seem to object to that view. God He's doesn't feel bothered by that view. Yeah, God doesn't uh, feel like he owes people anything, apparently. Does you know, he? He loves them when they're doing, you know, when they're giving him sacrifices, but, you know, not that much. He's not standing up for Job. Not yet, at least. Hmm. That's why Jesus came along to say, wait, he's a different guy. <laughs> 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 I mean, I almost get the impression Jesus, you know, while he was a Jew, he invented a whole new God. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. The, the, uh, well, I, I, to, to, I used to I used to tell Jeff that, you know, he could invest however he wanted, but I had to invest in ways the SEC approved of. Mm -hmm. But he had to keep to some sort of orthodox minimal orthodox theology whereas i could believe whatever i wanted hey, you're welcome to believe it but i i'm also honor bound to challenge <laughs> that's what makes life interesting i was just gonna say that's what's fun about this so, that's what makes us episcopalians yeah. but this is right. definitely a prosperity gospel well it is but so what that doesn't make it right exactly and just because just because it's bound into the bible doesn't make it right. The Bible is wrong in many places. <clears throat> you know, can you accept that? I can I... accept that. I do not have to take it literally, nor do I have to take yeah. moral stories as, as valid and instructive. They're just there. They are for our contemplation. I had a question. Are the books of the Old Testament supposed to be in chronic chronological order? That's a good question. I... I don't really think so. Um, well, seems... Certainly the history books are, right? And then the prophets. But like with Job, you know, it's really <coughs> late, but it's supposed to be, it, you know, it's, it's really meant to be set almost in the prehistory era before the patriarchs. So Job in particular is sort of an outlier in so many ways. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's after, you know, Samuel, Kings. Right. Judges, you know, Ruth, uh, Esther. Nehemiah, yeah. It's almost oh, like uh, they threw it in as almost like a wisdom book. Well, yeah. and because it is this funky genre, right? Because, I mean, in some ways it is sort of a wisdom book, a strange wisdom book, because, um, you know, it's got this mythological uh, characteristic, and then it's also, it's it's poetry, most of it. You know, there's prose book ending it, but it's mostly poetry in the way that the Psalms are poetry. So it's kind of hard to categorize. And that may be why it's where it is, just to kind of plunk it somewhere, because it's right before the Psalms. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's right with, you could just inch it up a little bit, and it would be right with wisdom, yeah. proverbs, 
Yeah, it's it's yeah. sort of a, a bridge between you know because we have all the history, right? Um, Samuel and Chronicles and Nehemiah and Ezra, and then there's Job. So mm. yeah. All right. Well, let's dive in and see what we what conclusions we draw or not about Job and God this week. Um, but this week, the essential question that Job will ask at the very beginning of chapter nine is how can a mortal be just before God? Um, and so that's, I just, I put that out as sort of a frame question for us to think about as we move through chapter nine, certainly, and, and 10. Chapter nine is pretty long, so I, comparatively to some of the other chapters we've read, so we probably will only get through nine and 10 today is my guess. Uh, if I were a betting woman, but I'm often wrong, so that may not be true. Um, so, and I thought one of the things we've been doing is having one voice read a whole monologue or a whole chapter of <coughs> Job, but because this one is longer and it kind of breaks itself naturally into three chunks, I thought maybe we could have three voices. Let me get rid of this guy. All right, how is that? Can you see that all right, everybody? Mm -hmm. so move that. I can't move that arrow, but, hmm. Okay. At least that, okay. So, let's just go back for a second, though, because it begins with, then Job answered, and it's worth reminding ourselves whom Job is answering. So, if you remember, last week, the second of Job's friends, Bildad, spoke, um, and he ends with you know, this almost idyllic vision of God. Um, God will not reject the blameless nor take the hand of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame and the tent of the wicked will be no more. And we talked, I think we talked about this last week. I, I certainly was thinking about it if we didn't talk about it. In some ways, it reminds me, at least, of the apocalyptic literature in Mark's gospel, when we kept seeing, you know, thinking about the people who were oppressed and, you know, the, all the talk about this will all be overturned, there will be, you know, when, when God's kingdom is realized, things will be different. I hear a similar tone to the end of what Bildad says there about, you know, those who hate you will be clothed with shame. There will be, in the fullness of time, a correction of what Job is going through. So that's the last thing his buddy says to him. And then, then we have Job's response. Would someone like to read verses 1 through 12 for us? I'd be happy to do that. Thanks, okay. okay. Uh, then Job answered. Indeed, I know that this is so, but how can a mortal be just before God? If one wished to contend with him, one could not answer him once in a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has resisted him and succeeded. He removes mountains, and they do not know it when he overturns them in anger. He shakes the earth out of its place, and its pillars tremble. He commands the sun, and it does not rise. <clears throat> he seals up the stars. He alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea. He made the bear <clears throat> and Orion, the Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. He does great things beyond understanding and marvelous things without number. Look, he passes by me, and I do not see him. He moves on, but I do not perceive him. He snatches away. Who can stop him? Who will say to him, what are you doing? Thank you. I would just like to say my version mm -hmm. starts off with, but how can mere mortals prove their innocence before God? Ah, uh, interesting. Well, that begs, I think, a look at the Hebrew. And, and just a reminder, this is one book of the Bible, I, mean, I think it's always worth doing, but especially in Job, it's really helpful. If your translation has something, you know, significantly different, let's talk about it because, and I've got, oh, go ahead, Ray. I've got a different one too, so we can throw that in. Um, uh, 
What have you got? I've got, uh, and it's New English Bible, uh, that at verse three, if a man chooses to argue with God, God will not answer one question in a thousand. Ah, very different. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, my, my version, when you skip down to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they all start with who, not he, but who ah. commands the sun, hmm. who alone stretched out, putting it into a question form. Ah, okay. <coughs> And that seems, John, that seems more in keeping with the Hebrew here. Um, I don't know for sure if it's a question or if it's the relative pronoun. You know, it yeah, is they, God who yeah. shakes the earth. It is God who commands. Um, Rhetorical question is what it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. Um, so, Fred, remind me, how, do, how does your translation render verse 2? Was it two? I think you said. Yes, indeed. I know that this is true, but how can mere mortals prove their innocence before God? Okay, so this suggests that the <laughs> says, "How can a man, human, be in the right before God?" And let's see, Sadak is a version of righteousness um, and to be justified. And and I think we talked about this when we were reading Paul that the idea of justification is like if you think about margins on a paper or on your you know, your word document if you have um, a document that is left or right justified it is lined up right it's like a right angle um, so the idea of being right or just is about it really means being lined up with God um, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but but it's inter It's just so interesting to me how the Hebrew in Job is tricky enough that it gets translated in so in a myriad of ways, and so that's why it's mm -hmm. this is fun to compare translations. Ellie, what have you got here? Is yours any different? Um, it's really not very different. Uh, indeed, I know that this is true, but how can a mortal be righteous before God? Though one wished to dispute with him, he could not answer him one time out of a thousand. So I presumably um, he, the person who, the human who wanted to dispute with God could not answer God one time out of a thousand is yeah. my assumption. Although somebody, was it you, Ray, had a, a difference? Your it had, a, the, it had the, the, it had it inverted. Yeah, yeah if, it, and I'll, if man chooses to argue with him, God, God will not answer one question in a thousand, which is... Mm also interesting yeah and, mm -hmm. and you can see how that those two interpretations come about because you've got these pronouns and the antecedents aren't necessarily clear who's the he so mm -hmm. you know, oh here comes nancy yay um so you know that's a really interesting question to me Do, so yeah. let's ask the question what difference does it make um if one wished to contend with god God could not answer or would not or would not answer him or if one wished to contend with God one could not answer God I think the that? second one is how I would interpret it saying you know how can I make my case God is so powerful mm -hmm. Gee, I'd say something and he'd come back a thousand times and refute me mm -hmm. that's that kind of how makes I heard more it. sense yeah. to me in terms as a lawyer <laughs> but the justification that he goes on to say you know is why god is right mm -hmm. is really you know he's bigger than you are you don't go up against a goliath David. yeah he doesn't yeah he doesn't say god you know is just <clears throat> god's justice is divine god sees things that we don't see and you, you have that prayer yeah he just says you know god's going to smite you something awful or God can smite you, well, and I, it's a bad. It's you know. It's why we don't worry about the Ukraine attacking Russia. Hmm. I, he just paused. I take like, this hey, back. Nancy, welcome. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Sorry. I was just gonna say I'm. I'd sort of take this back to the 
where we ended with Bildad or whatever his name was, who seemed to suggest, look, if you're if you are a good person, God will take care of you. If you're an evil person, tough, he won't. And you get what you deserve. And Job is sort of saying, Well, how do I prove I'm a good person? Yeah. And how do I go to yeah. him? I if thought I was how do I do it? And I can't argue with him because he's so powerful. He's everything. I don't, you know, I have I am nothing to him. Um, it seems to me that uh, Bill Dad is interpreting <laughs> God according to man's justice system, hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, that Job is trying to set him straight. That it's something much that God's uh, will is something much greater than the kind of man's rights and wrongs. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That God, you know, operates according to a whole different system. Mm -hmm. um, and to go oh, go ahead, May. Go ahead. I'm just, I, I can't help taking this a little sideways and thinking that this alternate reading, God will not answer once in a thousand, seems to me probably the way it would be read this morning in Texas. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. I'm sorry. I just no. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I still come back to you know. He Job is justifying God, but he's not justifying him on the basis of any philosophical principles of any greater mercy of any greater justice. Just simply, God is bigger than I am. Well, let's take a minute to look at how Job describes God in six through 12 so um or five through 12 and i'll just read it again and just listen and and listen to hear if it reminds you of anything he is wise and hard and mighty in strength who has resisted him and succeeded he removes mountains and they do not know it when he overturns them in his anger he shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble he commands the sun and it does not rise. He seals up the stars. He alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea. He made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the chambers of the south. He does great things beyond understanding and marvelous things without number. I'll stop there actually. Does it remind you of anything? A little bit of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about that? Well, he's sort of going backwards and, you know, yes. undoing what God, ha, you know, what God did to, sh to show, you know, and from that respect, it's almost like, you know, if, if you go all the way back, you have chaos. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ex that's exactly where I was going. Yes, I agree with you completely. It's like, you know, the mm -hmm. old VHS tapes when you hit rewind and, <laughs> and so, you know, all the things that all the good things that the creative, the generative, the beauty of Genesis, it's like it's just it's being rewound. And so where does that leave you? It leaves you back you know, in the beginning with, you know, the, the spirit hovering over the waters and in, in chaos and the formless void, that's kind of where Job puts us, puts God, you know, rewinds mm. us back to that point. So is his point in, in, is he making the point that if you challenge God, chaos results? If you, if I you think he's saying without God, there is nothing, so... I, maybe yeah. I might, I, I hear it more like, uh, what is the proper term in a positive that he is saying here, what he has created, he can destroy. Yeah. Uh, the, the power is all Job. there. Yeah. That's kind of how I hear it too, that, that With, the chaos that he's describing, rewinding that tape, that's, that's how Job feels right now. His utter, his whole life is in utter chaos and he's mm -hmm. kind of saying, you know <laughs> i know who did this to me and you know he he knows what it's like to be trampled and overturned and um you know the star the sun doesn't rise and the stars are sealed up i mean it's an evocative painting he, he picture he paints 
that he could be stating this also to the point that only God could have done this to me. True. Wow. God can do anything he wants. He can create, he can destroy. He's just. Yeah. And in a weird way that, that reinforces God's power, right? Even though it's, it's a horrible indictment of what God might do. It's also saying, well, he can, he can. It's, it's what he can do, but he, he, it gives him no rationale or justification or, you know, reason for what has happened. It's well, just so he does say it's great th or things beyond understanding. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. You know, that sits with me. I you just can't explain it. He is all powerful. And I, it, for my understanding, I can't make sense. Of it. Is that the purpose of verse 11 then? <laughs> he when he passes me by, I cannot see him. When he goes by, I cannot perceive him. Let's see what it says in the Hebrew. That, that goes back to Moses, yes. Yeah, exactly. Underst the, the perceive is understand, consider, perceive, regard, discern. Um, so he can't understand what's going on. So to something you said a minute ago, Fred, I'm thinking about Donna's comment about the way Bildad you know, perceives right and wrong according to human standards you know if we ask you know well if we if not if we ask if we comment that job doesn't offer any justification or god doesn't offer any justification of why god is doing this my question is does god need to offer justification and that's the hard part and we kind of we left off at that with that question sort of kind of last week if he wants, you know, respect, worship, well, whatever, you know, then yes. But he's he's so much greater than we are that we really just don't count, and our opinion of him doesn't matter because he created he created the stars. What does he care about us? Then why is he so desperate to be worshipped? I mean, suppose there was somebody who could come in and do Jesus's miracles and, you know, claimed to be the son of God, but also is a part of his sacrament was child sacrifice. Oof. That would be a tough sell in this culture. No, it wasn't David. Actually, a scary really? thing is it might not be. You know, being big and strong is not enough to get you, you know, the respect that I think God wants. But we're still talking about God in in human terms. I guess. How else can we understand it? Well, and but that gets back to what John was saying, you know, is that that there is a point beyond mm -hmm. which we cannot comprehend God, right? And and I think Job is is getting at that when he talks about the uh, capriciousness of God. And and that's what's, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, he can do all, God can do all this. I'm trying to avoid using the masculine pronoun, but since it's running throughout here, it's kind of hard to. Uh, God, God can do it, but is that enough to make you to give you the the faith in his good nature or his good intentions and you know all the other things that god expects well think about also what god the good that god does the blessings that we receive that someone said last week i think it was maybe you chuck said that you know when things are going right for us of course god's on our side everything's good and then it's when things start going wrong that we start questioning god and so i think we have to bear that in mind um and i'm you know i'm not saying that i don't do this too i absolutely do but you know this is sort of the the framing question that we keep have to wrestle with keep having to wrestle with is that okay so you know, what does this mean god is capable of, of this incredible abundance and graciousness and mercy and love and 
God also has the power to destroy. I think about my dog, Joey, who's not in the room right now, but he is half husky and he's got a little pit bull and he's got a, you know, a lot of these things, <laughs> a lot of these breeds in him, which by rights are terrifying. And if you look at the insurance company's list of dangerous breeds, he's got at least two of them. And he curls up in a ball like this on my lap and is the gentle soul. And Randy and I are always saying, if he wanted to, he could take our faces off. And, but he doesn't. And, but we always have to, we always live in that reality that, you know, he could, should he choose to, you know, turn. Um, now, I'm not com uh, equating God to my dog. Um, but it's, you know, that both of those reside there. And so it's easy to, to think about God as gracious and merciful, and loving, and all of that. But we also have to remember that God does have the power to do all these things that Job paints here. Doesn't that, in, especially in this, this um, early civilization, this early society, place God in the, in the position of a slave owner? Hmm. In that he holds people's lives in his hand and he can he can bless or he can yeah. curse and he's answerable to no one um and it's just smart to be on his good side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow that's a powerful image and the covenants that god made with the israelites early on were the same covenants you know they had the same form that you might have with a you know a, a more powerful king might have with a less powerful kingdom. Mm -hmm. They lined out, you know, who was who was in charge, and what the obligations and responsibilities of each side were. Indentured servitude. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. exploiting people, exploiting your fellow man, you know, went way <laughs> beyond slavery. That's how the way the world has worked for virtually well, what, the entire time. What God is doing is exploiting his creation. Well, he's according to Job. So then the next question is, is Job a reliable narrator? <laughs> well, but is he really? Because Bildad says he strikes the wicked and those who sin. But if you are righteous and on the right side, he will fill your mouth with laughter. So Bildad's point being that the righteous side. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellie. Go ahead. Bildad's point being that Job must have done something wrong. Yeah. And that there's a prosperity gospel theme going through this, that if you, you know, do the right things to, to please God, God will shower you with blessings. You'll get the, the cookie or the gold. Yeah, you put the right, you put the sacrifice in at the right time, you pull the lever and out comes, you know, 10 more bulls. God is a vending machine. We've or wives or kids or whatever it is you want. Um, if I'm close to trying to swallow these 12 verses whole <laughs> and um, Gulp. and I'm not probably going to succeed with it, but it looks one way of what I'm seeing is we're ending up, we've, we've summed up all of the power is in one place, the power to create, the power to destroy as we see it. And the you know, all of the sacrificing in the world to one side or the other and God's personality, we cannot know uh, whether he wants worship as Fred indicates or whether he does not. Uh, we can't know that. And we are left in the position of the only response is awe. Mm. And come, I mean, hard for us. Out of awe comes humility. Mm -hmm. Also mm -hmm. hard for us. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's, what? you know. Uh, I, yeah. Or when in doubt, try to stay on his good side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good advice. <laughs> if you can figure out which the good side is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why he sent prophets, theoretically. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, a lot of people aren't sure, but they say, why take the chance? Exactly. So, Hedge your bets, right? That's yeah. Pascal's, Pascal's approach. Yeah. Yeah. Fire insurance. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the good way to put it. I can insurance. 
Well, we should, how about we move on to 13 to 24. Would someone like to read these verses for us? <coughs> sure. Thank you, Fred. God does not restrain his anger. Even the cohorts of Rahabad cower at his feet. How can... How then can I dispute with him? How can I find words to argue with him? Though I were innocent, I could not answer him. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. Even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. He would crush me with a storm and multiply my wounds for no reason. He would not let me catch my breath, but would overwhelm me with misery. If it is a matter of strength, he is mighty. And if it is a matter of justice, who can challenge him? Even if I were innocent, my mouth would condemn me. If I were blameless, it would pronounce me guilty. Although I am blameless, I have no concern for myself. I despise my own life. It is all the same. That is why I say he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. When a scourge brings sudden death, he mocks the despair of the innocent. How far was I supposed to go? 24. Next. Oh, 20, okay. Yep. When a land falls into the hands of the wicked, he blindfolds its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? Good place to pause. Thank you. Oof. Yeah, oof is right. I found it interesting, Fred, your translation, I think it was at verse 15. I think you, it said, though, if I were innocent, I couldn't answer him. Though I, I were innocent, I could not answer him. I would appeal to my accuser. So it's, it's the subjunctive there, um, as opposed to this translation that says, you know, is, is the declarative, I am innocent. Um, so that's just an interesting translational question. Yeah, he does later on go on to say he was he is innocent. Right, at verse 20. But he starts out with, you know, it's, it's not so clear. Yeah, and he's basically saying, you know, it doesn't matter. It's uh, my translation, New English, uh, going, uh, keying from verse 14. How less, how much less can I answer him or find words to dispute with him? And in the context of disputing and arguing, uh, though I am right, I get no answer, mm -hmm. though I plead with my accuser for mercy. If I summon him to court, he responded, and so forth. So it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it keeps the metaphor of the dispute, I think, better than this does, mm -hmm. or maybe worse than this does. I mean, it's... Well, it didn't, <clears throat> Ray, didn't your one and verse 15, again, flip it around? The one says, though I am innocent, I cannot answer him. And I thought yours said he doesn't answer me or something. Like though that. I am right, he doesn't answer me. I get no answer. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, I'm glad you oh, picked yeah. up on that, John. Yep, once again, it's inverted. That's, That's consistent, right, with, with earlier in the chapter. And in verse 16, even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. He would crush me with a storm and multiply my wounds for no reason. You know, there's a very, this is a, this is the God that counts the hairs of your head and nothing happens without his direct intervention. You know, so I'm there is ask the question again, because I don't think we, we talked about it. Is Job a reliable narrator here? Well, he's covered with boils. Okay. <laughs> so let's hold on to that. Well, hello. You, this is the this is a monster who could, could, uh, <laughs> Face off, yeah. yeah. Here we are, um, the question is, if he thinks someone is attacking you, exactly. Right. Will that face be left intact? That's right. Hello. Yes, I know you're. Very, I know you won't play. I had a lab mix at one point who was just the sweetest dog in the world, and I could have seventy-five people over for dinner, and you know, all she would try and do is cage a few snacks. <laughs> <clears throat> but if she thought somebody. You know, somebody walked into my house at one point that she didn't know, who was totally expected. But she parked in the back and came in the back door, and I hear all this noise and barking. And she had a friend, you know, the mother of a friend of mine in a corner telling her exactly what was going to happen to her. 
we had a similar incident last night. A woman walked through our yard at about 11 o'clock at night. I don't know what she was thinking. And Randy went to check and inadvertently let Joey out, which he never gets out of the, the gate, but he did. And he just went tearing off. And this woman screamed bloody murder. I was <laughs> And she's like, you know, control your dog. That thing is rabid. And then, you know, Papa Bear, oh my, said, my dog is not rabid. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> my yard. Yeah. But it's all the... Uh... The protectiveness exactly yeah, it, well it is i mean wow. and they your family exactly. and how they treat you is not gonna exactly. i mean another time i was jogging in georgetown about 10 o'clock at night and i was overtaking this guy and all of a sudden he hears you know flap 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 <laughs> coming at him and he turns around and cocks his fist back he thought he was getting mugged oh wow yeah and before i yeah, even knew time. what was happening she was between me and him once mm. again, telling him that <laughs> she was, you know, if this him. went down, she was, <laughs> she was going to take a part in that, in that fight. Yep. She was going to overturn those mountains. Right. And <laughs> well, she was going to do her best, yeah. but you know, I mean, here it is. Even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. He would crush me with a storm and multiply my wounds for no reason. Mm hmm. So my question still is, though, just because Job says that about God, is that true about God? Or are we reading this through Job's point of view because he's covered in boils and his kids are dead? You and know, he's not getting any satisfaction. And he's not getting any satisfaction at all. Well, he's talking to his uh, the, will his comforters put that in quotes yeah, exactly. <laughs> with friends like those <laughs> yeah will his comforters dispute that and in fact later on will god dispute that has he talked to god yet has he asked no god? well you don't know he has asked but he hasn't gotten any response yeah okay yeah yeah in chapter let's see we're in chapter nine so last week in chapter eight was the first time he addressed god yeah up until that point it had you know sort of been at a distance and then all the time, yeah. yeah um if i've sinned what have i done to you mm -hmm. your target have i become a burden to you hmm So that's the end of verse uh, chapter seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it is a matter of justice, who can challenge him? Mm -hmm. Even if I were innocent, my mouth would condemn me. If I were blameless, it would pronounce me guilty. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there seems to be no uh, absolute standard other than whatever God wants. Mm -hmm. Because from and, and going back to Ray's point earlier, I can't imagine the people in Texas are thinking that those parents this morning, mm. you know, these precious children. Yeah. What did these kids do to deserve this? Exactly. Who sinned? Did they or their parents? Yeah. 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 You know, and that was the question Jesus asked. Well, it was the question that was asked of Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it make going back to you know when everything is going our way it's easy to find god merciful and just and mm. abundant and loving but when tragedy when evil happens then we also you know posit all of this to god um and so my question is you know when when we were saying talking about bildad saying well you must have done something wrong is is Satan right here that as soon as a little pressure is put on Job, so much for having integrity and being upstanding and righteous and all of this, immediately he starts the blame game, right? And I'm not blaming Job. I think it's an it's a uh, an interesting study of human nature, right? That you know, we because I I would probably do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. I am in no way casting aspersions on Job. Um, but Job isn't doing that. He is saying, you know, I can't contend with God. God is too mighty. I can't, you know, if I proclaim my innocence, you know, I can't prove it. He is accepting his role in this relationship. 
But he's also saying that God has inflicted all of this. And he says, yes. there's no one to defend me from this calamity that's been brought upon me. So he is, he's definitely positing blame. Positing blame, but he is accepting his role as mm-hmm. being, you know, I can't <laughs> proclaim my innocence. You know, I can't. He's, he is not cursing God you know, and dying, as his wife recommended. <laughs> he's, getting what other role does he- he's getting close, but he and he's blaming God for it. Right. Or he is he is not a blame is perhaps the wrong word because it implies, you know, some something negative. He is attributing all of his pain to God. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he is still accepting his role as you know, as if he were the slave. And the master felt like, you know, whipping him for a while. Mm-hmm. Well, what other option has he got, given that he believes, he, he understands that God is. He could curse God and die, God. like his wife told him to. Well, that wouldn't be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was an automatic why, 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 is, <laughs> why, why isn't this close to cursing God? I mean, he's, yeah. he's destroying me. He's doing this. I can't defend myself. I can't possibly do it. I, I'm innocent. I'm innocent, but he's still doing it to me. He's accepting his powerlessness in the relationship. Then why is he talking and going on and on and on if he's... Because he's covered with boils and it hurts. <laughs> And he has people to listen to him. Yes. Yeah, they they stay <laughs> silent for seven he days. Left to go. So there's going to be a lot of this, you know. <laughs> he's, he's on this rant. Here we go. But he, so what what are we supposed to learn from this? Ah, oh, great question, Anna Maria. So what are we supposed to learn from this? Do as we engage this text, do we accept that this is how this is the true nature of God? What do you all think? What are we supposed, what's the takeaway here? I'm glad you asked that question. That's that's always the right question. I think uh, we have to wait and read the whole thing before we can answer that. I mean, this is just a, I mean it's a work in progress. I, I'm comparing uh, Job's attitude towards Paul's definition of faith. You know, Paul, Paul has faith. Am I? And, and remember oh, yeah. that this is a, oh, go ahead, Ray. I, I understand the words, but I don't, they're empty right now. What do you mean by that? That, you know, Paul, even if you don't know, you know, if you can't tell what's going on, that you don't, uh, you know, faith is something that's deep you know, within you that doesn't have to be justified by reason or intellect or, you know, anything else. You just have faith. And that is almost, you know, where Job is at this point. Mm -hmm. I got it. That sounds like a dying declaration. And uh, even in misery, I understand that the arc of the universe is toward justice Hmm. i'm thinking back you know while we have gun violence on our minds to the uh to the shooter who murdered all of those amish children Mm -hmm. and the community forgave him Mm -hmm. because that was you know yeah they felt like they had i'm I'm not going to say they felt like they had no choice i don't want to speak for them but you know it was just such an integral part of who they were Mm. (laughs) <laughs> that they could not call for vengeance, that they could not, you know, be angry at him mm-hmm. and still hold on to their faith. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I see this as two different versions of God. You know, this is the Old Testament version of God who does things, intervenes, you know, helps the blessed and smites the wicked. And we can be argued Paul, that. we're talking about a totally different God. We're talking about a God, a loving God, a God who is not there every day, not the vending machine God. So <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I disagree, Fred, with the suggestion. This is somehow 
Well, Paul, you know, Paul has simply delayed justice until after the apocalypse that he thinks is coming any day now. It's not that the wicked aren't going to suffer. It's just they're not going to suffer on this earth. They're going to suffer, you know, as soon as the second coming arrives. Well, well that's you also read to live now before the second coming. So that uh... So the other thing I would say about the two gods, because this that's a I'm glad you said that, John, because that is such a, a prevalent way of sort of categorizing understanding and, and reconciling Hebrew scripture and this God of vengeance and quid pro quo and all this with the God of the New Testament of Christian scripture. So I'm going to offer a suggestion that you know, because I personally don't believe that God, God, if God changes or if God's a different God, then how is, how is that God? But what has changed is human understanding of God. And that's why I keep going back to the yeah. question, is Job a reliable narrator? Because with Jesus, we have a first person revelation of God. And Jesus says, you know what, guys, you've gotten all of this wrong for generations. And let me tell you who God really is. And so this perception of God as capricious and all this, it makes sense that people would think that based on the evidence at hand. And then Jesus says, well, no, you know, it's it's grace, it's mercy, and you, you all have misunderstood. Um, so for me, that's, and, and this is what Ellie was getting at earlier, I think, too, when you were talking about this is why we need Jesus. Um, you know, for me, it makes sense, and this is how I've sort of come to, to hold these two in tension, that, of course, Job feels this way about God. He's covered in boils. His kids are dead naturally he feels that way um and i don't see anything about him that says he's mad at god though he's merely wants an explanation i mean he's not cursing god he's not saying you know the open the open yale course john may remember this because i think you went through him too the uh, old testament instructor said the early bible was a continual god knew what he wanted and had it all planned out when he uh you know made the universe and created adam and the first parts of genesis are just god having it all planned out and humans doing something unexpected and god having to adjust and change the covenant and you know do one thing do one thing or another that he had not expected to have to do <coughs> so maybe god does change again it's and certainly those early books of the the first 11 chapters of genesis are all prehistory before right. abraham that's that's mythology right and so that's human the human uh, attempt to explain our origins you know why do people speak different languages oh because of the tower of babel and god you know frustrated their ability to understand one another so again we have to to read this through the lens of humans trying to make sense of who God is, um, unless you know, unless we choose to be biblical literalists, which I think you know, we, we I think most of us here would say that we're not. Um, that uh, this tradition tends not toward a more literal reading, but you know, this question of you know, God, it, you know, God has the power to do this. And, and this is what has happened to me. Um, but I, I, I don't hear as much acceptance of it as, as I think you do, Fred. And that's fine. I mean, we interpret it differently. But I, I hear him getting pretty darn close to cursing God. It is. It, he's getting close to, uh, you know, but what he's saying is I have no power. True. There's no point in my cursing God. I might as well curse the sun. You know, there, I have no power in this. Cursing God would be, a, you know, even if I wanted to, it would be a useless exercise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, that I agree with for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to make 10 today. <laughs> no, we're not going to make 10 today. And that's fine because this is. A, I think this is a fascinating. Uh, 
I do too. It's Discussion. A, it's a great chapter. Uh, is there anything else on this chunk that we want to look at before? I, I, uh, one thing I just, as a note, I wanted to explain up here in 13. God will not turn back his anger. The helpers of Rahab bowed beneath him. I got hung up on that when I was reading it because Oof. Rahab, do you, do you all remember the story of Rahab? No, I That's meant to ask you yeah. about that as I was reading it. So, so there is a story in Joshua. Rahab is the prostitute that you know, helped oh. Joshua. Help the spies? Yeah. This is not the same Rahab because I kept saying, well, how could the helpers of Rahab, uh, you know, how could God be angry at the helpers of Rahab if, if God was, you know, wanted Joshua to conquer Jericho and all that? So it turns out it's a different Rahab. Um, and I will just pull this. Um, this Rahab is mythical sea monster remember when we talked about Leth leviathan this is the same oh. idea and then i love this the emblematic name of egypt so is this pharaoh rahab <laughs> is you know the sea monster this is pharaoh who is you know consuming the people of israel so um i just wanted to flesh that out a little bit because i just i kept getting stuck and i thought well I thought Rahab did something right. And so why, why would God be angry at Rahab? So that just wanted to, if anyone else was tripped up by that, I just wanted to explain it's a different Rahab. Apparently the Hebrew was slightly different, but my Hebrew is so elemental that I couldn't tell you. Um, anything else here before we move on to the last chunk of chapter? <coughs> All right. Then would somebody like to read 25 to 35? I could do that. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, now this is gonna be from my Bible. It's the RSV, so it'll Great. be a little different than what you have. So this is 25 through 35. Yep, okay. yes, thank you. Uh, my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away, they see no good. They go by like skiffs of reed, like an eagle swooping on the prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad countenance, and I will be of good cheer, I become afraid of all my suffering, for I know that will not hold me innocent. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow and cleanse my hands with lye, yet thou wilt plunge me into a pit, mm -hmm. and my own clothes will abhor me. For he is not man as I am, that I might answer him, that we should come to trial together. There is no umpire between us. Mm -hmm. Who may lay his hands upon us both? Let him take his rod away from me. And let not dread of him terrify me, that I would speak without fear of him, for I am not so in myself. Wow, thank mm, you. Well, I like that there's no umpire between us. Yeah. Interesting. Let's see, there's a footnote here at Mediator. Uh, another reading is Would that there were a mediator. Um, Go between intermediary, mediator. Mm -hmm. Arbitrate. Yep. Yeah. What do you all hear here? The last part of um, verse 35 is, it's different. Uh, mine says, uh, um, if the only way there's someone to arbitrate between us, blah, 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 then I would speak up without fear of him. But as it now stands with me, I cannot. Let's see what the footnote here it says, for I am not so in myself. I think your version's a lot clearer. It makes more sense to me. Uh, I've got a little different version in New English, verse 35. I would then speak without fear of him, for I know I am not what I am thought to be. Hmm. Hmm. Different. I'm not sure that clarifies anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this almost got to be. This almost say that again, me. Ray. I am not what's on the story. Oh. I am not thought. I am not what I am thought to be. Well, that's clear in that. That's text. really clear. 
<laughs> All those well, negatives. Well, what am I thought to be? Guilty. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, that, well okay. God, that's, that answers. John, John, go ahead. Uh, sorry. No, I was going to say, I mean, this, if there were someone to appeal to besides God, you know, if it was me against God and we had a real umpire, then I would tell them what I think of God. <laughs> I, would, you know, I would speak without, I, you know, I would, yeah. said, and I would, you know, have my case because somebody would finally hear me who, uh, who doesn't, isn't my judge at the same time. He is doubting God's justice. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, he wants an impartial God, arbitrator because he doesn't trust God to be just. Hmm. According to his understanding of justice. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And well, so, and that's the problem is there's no appeals court here, right? right. So, you know, judge God is the the judge and the arbit, you know, they're the final arbiter, and so he's stuck. Um, let's see. What else? When I read those first lines in this section that you know things are terrible my days fly away from me i think i don't know if ever anybody i always remember catch 22 that there was mm -hmm. a character who was always in pain he made himself in pain because that way he would experience life longer than anybody else yes in good times yes he would you know go by but I, mm -hmm. so i just when i read this it just brought back reading oh yeah those <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's definitely saying, you know, that God is not just. And he wants justice. Well. But he's not complaining about it as much as just saying that's those are the facts. Well. Well, the, he just said that God destroys both the blameless and the wicked. And he thinks he's blameless, he's being destroyed, and he wishes he, there was somebody he could appeal to. Mm -hmm. God is not just. He does, he, he does both, at least from his perspective. He, he's not stepping in to take care of me because I'm innocent. Mm -hmm. Judge, jury, and, and executioner. Exactly. That's the phrase I was looking for. Yeah. Before. I it, keep it, coming back to the fact that, you know, God in this philosophy, God is responsible for everything that happens mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, the more Eastern, you know, Buddhism or whatever, that life is suffering. Mm -hmm. No one's responsible. It's just the way life is. You cannot avoid suffering. You know, the how do you cope with it is more the goal of the exercise. It's interesting to me because um, at verse 31 or 30 and 31, if I wash myself with soap and cleanse my hands with lye, so this purification, right? Yet you will plunge me into filth. <laughs> so the, you know, this is a direct address to mm. God. Um, let me just look at verse 31. And yeah, and so it's like, okay, I, if, I, if I purify myself, if I cleanse myself, you're going to make me dirty. You're going to plunge me into filth and my own clothes will abhor me. I love that line. Um, and then he switches again to the third person, for he is not immortal as I am, that I might answer him. So it's like the Hebrew here, and you know, again, it's hard for me to know, is it just an issue, because we've talked before about in Hebrew, certainly the early texts, just a, literally a dot, you know, placed in the wrong place could change the meaning. So maybe mm. that's just a textual thing, textual thing, that it should be uh, he and not you. But it's just interesting that the way we get it, the way it's we have it received, he slips into that, you know, you, that second person address. So is he saying, you know, why, why bother, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm going to get... I'm going to get dumped on anyway, yep. you know? You're going to smite me no matter what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And there's well, in one sense, I mean, to be really glum about it, I mean, that's true of all of us all the time. We all end, yeah. we all die. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about smiting, huh? Uh, <laughs> I mean, Land on just, Monday, captured on Tuesday, and shot on Wednesday. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know. And once again, that you know, in this <laughs> in this world view, God is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. You know, God is on the hook. You can see why when Newton came up with his uh, theories, you know, the clockwork universe, God became very popular because suddenly you didn't have to blame God for everything. He just sort of tipped the first domino and the rest of it is pre, you know, went as blame. And is this consistent with the uh, Jesus teaching? I think that's not actually a germane question in this case because you know, this is, it's not supposed to be consistent with Jesus. It predates Jesus, you know, by a thousand years probably, but. Mm -hmm. But it's also a very different understanding of God. And, you know, Jesus sets the record straight. And um, I was going to ask you all something else and it just, it, 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 it flitted away like the skiff of reed. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember what I was going to ask you. One of the, I mean, looking at the stories in, in the Bible, and I recall uh, one priest explaining to somebody uh, in a class context that you could look at the, the Bible, in the Old Testament included, as, as a, a humanities lab book. Hmm. reporting on various experiments and what what they observed how they looked at it recording that and uh and then passing it on and then there's another and another and another and we are all trying to work out the right answer well i would you know because we are who we are i'd say and then we came to the experiment called jesus and the whole hmm. the whole enterprise made sense and it made sense in a new way. That's and a lovely way to put it. Right? Interesting. Yeah. The experiment succeeded finally, or whatever. I love that humanities lab book. And, and you can sort of see that as you go through the Hebrew scriptures, you know, these attempts to understand. And, you know, that's why, of course, God seems capricious and angry and unfair because, you know, it, you know, you know when you are being when you're being conquered and occupied and you know people are just being mowed down naturally it doesn't seem fair when you're covered in boils and your children are dead that's you know mm -hmm. it doesn't seem fair um and then that's the question i guess going back to that essential question how can a mortal be just before god you know is that even is that the right question that job asks is it possible to be just before god i don't know i don't have the answer to that uh, i think the beginning of the of the book you know the part that's in prose says he was you know he did everything right according to the standards of that society and what he understood for sure well it'd be interesting to who do we think is the narrator of the of job mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not God. It's not Job. Right. It's some, some storyteller around a campfire. Yep. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a man named yeah. Job who was upright and justice and, and just and had integrity. But you have so you have a narrator who you know who is, I guess you could say he's the arbiter. He sees God sitting with his angels, and he sees Job down here. I, let's let's stick with the storyteller metaphor for a second. If 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 the narrator in that case is outside the the story, he's not. He's he's relating somebody else's view here. I mean, it's not. Uh, 
but he has the power to make it make it happen. He brings it out for consideration. It's a story. Mm -hmm. There once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. Yeah, I get, you absolutely can hear the the mm -hmm. campfire storyteller there. Mm -hmm. There were born to him seven sons, and yeah, you, 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 even the cadence oh. of it has rings of, you know, the campfire story, the fairy tale story. The... No, I mean, and then you tell the story and say, "No, discuss." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Figure out what that. this means. <laughs> come past. Yeah, thousands there you go. Years, and, and that, but the, what's so cool about it is thousands of years later, here we are on Zoom around a very different kind of campfire discussing among ourselves. We're still, yeah. you know, there's this timelessness to this story because yeah. we still ask these questions. Mm -hmm. You know, how can a person be just before God? Is God capricious? Is God fair? Is God just? What does that look like? Um, you know, God's ways are not my ways. Well, or, or Job's last comment, why should I keep doing this? Exactly. Why, you know, what's the point of all the sacrifices and everything that I've exactly. done? This is where I wind up, right? Exactly. I am Which guilty. Is... Why should I struggle in vain? Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been found guilty. Mm. Yep. But, but see, and that's the, the interesting thing. We, it's, we have the advantage <coughs> of, uh, bless yeah, bless you. You know, we hear that and because we're outside the story, it, him saying, I've been found guilty, but I'm innocent. I tell you, I am innocent. And like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. Let's Apparently his cool friends cookies. don't believe him. Yeah, well, Bildad surely didn't. Yeah, and, and what's his name? Eliphaz before him did. He basically <laughs> blamed the victim and said, you know, what did you do that you brought it upon yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not hearing anger here. I'm hearing despair. Mm -hmm. Resignation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's bafflement in there, too. Mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he is, he's asking the accuser, the, the, his adversary, not the accuser, his adversary mm -hmm. for an answer. And not one in a thousand questions will he get an answer for. And at the, and it's at the same time, he's accepting the fact that he's not going to get an answer, yeah. which is also despairing. That's a hard yeah. Well, he's accepting the view that, that of his comforters, that he did something wrong. But he doesn't know what. He doesn't know but what he, he could have done differently. But he keeps attesting to his innocence. So that's that's the rub there because he says, "Yeah, if if I yeah. were guilty, but I'm not." But he accepts um, the worldview of his comforters. Something must have happened to oh. cause this. How can he do otherwise? I mean, he's a man of his times. Wow. I know I am not what I'm thought to be. Everyone seems to think I'm guilty, but I know that I am not. So he's still wrestling with this. Mm. Um, he's missing that, you know element of you know worldview that life is suffering you can't avoid it right because he believes that quid pro quo the prosperity you, gospel then you're going to be blessed and you know and if you are blessed then you must have done the right thing um so it's sort of that tautology that um, that keeps going around and around and so it's you know how, how do you make sense then when bad things happen to good people. So on that note, we are way over time and I don't want to hijack you all. Um, this was a wonderful, this is why this Job is just such a rich conversation. And I'm so grateful to all of you for your presence here with us for it. Um, so next week we'll pick up with chapter 10 and we'll go from there. All right, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Patty. You thank you, Patty. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, thanks. This is so Bye. wonderful. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.